a lot of us love this time of year. We get some time off, it's minimal change, so we can get some downtime. We can trade one crazy for another crazy <coughs> family in-laws. <clears throat> Happy holidays, everybody. And in typical fashion, Apache and Java and Log4j said, hold my beer. So here we are. There are some Ruckus products that are affected, and we're going to run through that, and we're going to give you all the information you need, but we also understand that there's a lot of extra things you need to deal with right now. For example, the people that probably need to approve your change are probably on PTO, so getting a hold of them is difficult, which reminds me, hey, Jesse, do we have any change control challenges or red tape? Change control shouldn't be a problem, but I do need to run it past my boss. Hey, boss, is it okay if I run a update to my smart zone in the lab? Yeah, sure. Go ahead. All right. Well, in that case, Jesse's going to cover everything for you. He's going to go through workarounds, how to patch it, demonstrate it, everything. We tested this and made sure that the behavior we were really expecting was absolute. So we know it fixes it, and we know it takes care of it. And the beauty of it is when you have something that sits there and you don't really need it, well, instead of patching it, we just removed it. So the entire functionality is gone. SmartZone doesn't use it. The infrastructure doesn't need it. So you don't have to worry about any of the further patches that are out there that actually introduced other vulnerabilities. So instead of patching the version up, we just removed it altogether, and you don't have to worry about it. I've noticed that I'm suffering from a huge bout of nice guy syndrome today. So this link and any links that you need, I'll include in the description below, including a link to the forum post that's up so you can interact with the community. Now, I would go through this step by step in detail. Jesse's going to demonstrate it shortly. But the main thing that I want you to be aware of is Ruckus Analytics is not affected. If you're a Ruckus Cloud customer and there is effect, there will be correspondence, but there's no action that you need to take. The only actions you need to take is if you're currently running Smart Zone, and that's whether it's a virtualized environment or an appliance. And it's only specific versions. So version 3.x is not affected, but version 5.x and 6.x is. And, you know, now I'm kind of curious. Hey, Jesse, how hard was this to do? It's not difficult at all to apply the KSP. It's pretty simple. We'll walk through that here in a moment. Um, but maybe you're in a position where you can't actually fully apply the KSP. Uh, it does require a restart of the appliance, whether virtual or physical. Um, so maybe you're not able to do that. You don't get permission to. The change window's not there. So there are some things that we can do to kind of work around and limit the attack vector. Uh, I'll walk you through that in a Smart Zone 6.0 instance. So looking at Smart Zone, we can actually um, create a management ACL for that management interface. Uh, we can go up to administration, admins and roles and go over to access control list. We do have to enable this. So you may already have some uh, enabled, and if so, good for you. You've already kind of done your due diligence um, to, to limit the exposure. Um, but if we create in management ACL, we can limit what IPs, what IP ranges, or what IP subnets are able to even access our management interface. So maybe you have this open to the whole network and you should just really restrict it down to your admin VLAN. Um, you could certainly do that. So doing doing this is a, is a really good workaround for you to be able to limit your exposure. Awesome, all right, so we have workarounds, we have patches. He's gonna show you how to do it in six and five dot X. And now that I think about it, his boss sounds like a real stickler. Um, I'm glad that we were able to put this together and get you everything. Like I said, everything's in the description. There is forum posts up. If you have any questions, jump over there. Everybody's paying attention to it. And with that, Jesse, it's all yours. The process for patching itself is really simple. Um, there are some caveats that we need to talk about. There's two different versions of the patch available, and they depend on which version of Smart Zone you're running. If you're running Smart Zone 5.2 or 6.0, we have a patch file for that. If you're running 5.0 or 5.1, we have a patch file uh, for that as well. Uh, we do not have a patch requirement for 6.1 or 3.6. So if you're running Smart Zone 3.6 or 6.1, those are not impacted by these vulnerabilities. There is no patch needed to be applied there. And it should go without saying, but we're going to say it anyway, just so you don't end up on Santa's naughty list. Make sure you perform a cluster backup before applying this patch. So based on your Smart Zone instance, you're going to download the appropriate file. So you can see the one on the left here is called before 5.2. So this would be for 5.0 and 5.1 instances. And then on the right-hand side, we have 
5.2 plus. So this is going to be for 5.2 and 6.0 instances. I've also already extracted these into their respective directories. And you can see that when I open one, it is a single KSP file. We have noticed on Mac OS that when extracting these, it actually breaks it into three files. Uh, to mitigate that, you can use the CLI utility for extracting on Mac OS, or you can use a utility like Kika. Once the file has been downloaded that you need for your version, uh, in this case 6.0, we can go over to Monitor, we can choose Scripts, and we can choose Patch Diagnostic Scripts. Now, in this case, I already have uploaded the patch um, to the system, but I haven't executed it yet. Uh, I do want to point out the uh, off, off is the default mode for upload to current node. Um, this, if toggled to on, would only upload the patch file to the specific controller that we're logged into if we're in a cluster. However, with this mode set to off, it is going to go ahead and upload this patch file to every node in our cluster. And really, there's no reason to turn that on. We would like to leave it off here. We are going to need to apply this to every single node if you are running in a cluster. So we can just go ahead and browse to the KSP file and then choose to upload. And once we do, it appears here. Now, if you are a single node, you would be able to select this and choose apply patch. However, um, a lot of you are running smart zone in a clustered environment, and we would recommend to apply the patch via the command line. So let's take a look. So once we're logged into the CLI, we can start our process. So I'm gonna go ahead and go into enable mode and enter my password, and I'm gonna actually enter into the patches submenu. Um, so we're doing this via CLI so we can actually make sure that we intentionally target the specific node that we want. So in this case, 1.51. If you had multiple nodes in your cluster, you would repeat this process after you've uploaded the patch um, just so you can move through all the different nodes and make sure that you hit them all. So in this case, uh, I'm in CLI because I want to make sure that I'm on this node and I'm applying it to that node at that time, and I'm reloading it with intention, and I'm not just letting the UI do it. If you only had a single node, you could do it all through the UI, and it would be no problem, but we're showing you the process here. So um, from this context, I'm actually gonna do show uploaded patches, and we can see again here that we have that um, ER fix. I'm actually just gonna copy that file name, and I am gonna type apply, and then I'm gonna paste that in here and hit enter. All right, you can see that it uh, replaced the files necessary as outlined in that patch. And it says restart the services to make the change take effect, but we actually need to reload. If you look at the KB article, um, there were some instances of service not restarting properly, and it was determined that we actually need to reload the machine. So we're going to go ahead and exit out of patch menu and perform a reload. So again, with Smart Zone 5, depending on which version of Smart Zone 5 you are running, you're going to need to download the respective KSP file. So in this case, we are, down, we are running version 5.2.2, and we've already downloaded the file. The location for uploading the file is really the only difference in this process. So we need to go under Diagnostics on the left, and we need to choose Scripts. So once we have gotten to the scripts window, we can browse to our script file. And again, we need the 5.2 plus file because we are running 5.2. And once we have down, uh, defined that, we can upload it. And there we are. We have the patch applied. The remainder of the steps remain the same. So again, on a cluster, we would log into each node via the command line, go into that patches uh, sub menu and apply the ER fix here. If you only had a single node, you can uh, highlight it and choose apply patch. Uh, for both instances or both versions, you do need to restart the nodes. So make sure that you have your change window scheduled and you have the changes approved. But the process otherwise is the same, just the location for uploading the diagnostic patch differs. Jesse does a great job of simplifying everything and showing you how simple it really can be. So I'd like to thank him. I'd also like to thank our engineering and support teams. They've put a lot of extra effort in to make sure that you're fully equipped and aware of what's going on. And we just wanted to reflect some of the work that they've done. I know they've been working very hard and we know you are too. So hang in there, have a great holiday season, a great new year. And don't forget, we've published this to two different channels. We have our Ruckus channel and we also have the Ruckus Education Channel. So it's here on both. 
You can expect to see content hitting both of those channels all next year. And as always, thanks for watching.